Oh, well, let me kill this Arctic Needler. There we go. Oh, so I just kill him and I randomly get a blue, blue quality sword. Epic Inquisitor's Katana plus plus. Um, see your loot, but I can't take your loot. Right, exactly, yeah. So let's see, out of ring, okay. That's a plus one, okay. Yeah, so uh, some of the spells and feats come from your gear, and some come from your, your uh, talent build. And um, so that makes the crafting more interesting because you're like, okay, what spell do I want to put on my gear? So you combine it and put it together and say, I want to put this spell, this is what my build is, but you can still kind of change your build by switching your gear out, but not completely. Um, and then there's little th little rings that can give you a plus one onto like a spell, that type of thing. And the uh, the item scheme, so it's basically the crafting scheme, the item scheme, uh, and the drop scheme were designed by Stieg Hedlund, and he was the lead designer for Diablo 2. Very nice. So let's. So now that your map works, let's go. Let's go ahead and go to a, a big zone. Okay. So if you open up your world map, um, sort of in the bottom are a bunch of Pyrun zones, Pyrun or uh, that area. So those are the high yeah. level. So we could start in... Pyrun Mezzanine? Yeah, let's see. Let's go to... I'm trying to remember. Let's go to something that looks really big. How about okay. Pyrun Upper Keep? So click on that one. We'll go there. You have not yet activated this travel pad. Visit it first, and then you can travel to it. Oh, you can't go there now? No, but I can go to the mezzanine. Okay, I'll meet you in the mezzanine. Queen Illyria's glorious ballroom is no more. So this is the home of uh, Lord Pyrus, the Gargoyle Lord. And uh, he's planning to attack. So come, we come here to kill him. He's actually not quite in the game yet. He's, he's going to be the next set of the expansion. Okay. We can go around here and fight these guys. And I guess these guys are still lower than us. Ooh, we're already dying. <laughs> okay. You may already be dying, but I'm still at 801 health. Okay. I'm coming back. Maybe you put me on god mode and forgot to do so for yourself. No. Nope. I think you've got really good gear. Okay. I say I took some took some hurt there for a second. Huzzah! That's what my shout apparently is. Probably time to kill this rock mender next. So was this portion just added in recently? Two. I yes. know that you haven't completed it out. Okay. Yeah. So we added a bunch of zones, and it's like the way the game scales. It starts off pretty easy. So the beginning zones, uh, the elder bosses are pretty easy, and the higher and the higher you go, the more it gets to be like sort of a hardcore experience. Um, with you know traditional raid mechanics and stuff like that. So what would the uh, party size be on those? Uh, just six. We, we're not really doing quite the uh, f forty person parties or whatever, but yeah, no, just six. Yeah. Can't apparently target that wraith. <laughs> you 
The only reason I invited you to a party is so I can actually uh, ninja loot you now. Aha! Uh -huh. <laughs> so it won't be like, that's Drambar's loot. And I'm like, oh, no loot for me. See, now it's all my loot. So what was the first MMO that got you into this? That you, that you, uh, that you first, really loved? The first MMO that I started playing was actually... Uh, Dark Age of Camelot was the very first oh, one. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And from there, I played Final Fantasy XI. I didn't really play it a lot. Uh, at the time, I was in the Marine Corps, and I started playing Dark Age of Camelot, and then got deployed. And then I came back, and Final Fantasy XI had just come out, so I started playing that, and I got deployed again. And then when I came back the next time, World of Warcraft had just come out. And if you think about the timing on those, you, you can probably figure out where I was deployed to. But, um... Uh-huh. <laughs> so, then I played World of Warcraft for a number of years, and tried anything and everything. Uh, since then, I, I don't play World of Warcraft anymore. But that was the one that really stuck its hooks into me. But the other ones were great as well. I just like the, the just, huge worlds, the exploration. Uh, that's one of the things I really kind of miss about a lot of the newer MMOs is you don't really have that sense of exploration that you used to have. And a lot of it's just because of, you know, you could look everything up. So you just kind of have to resist that temptation to do that. And so many games anymore are so theme parked, you're just... It basically quest hub to quest hub and just totally guide your guide your ways to go. I know, and that's the challenge with an MMO is people just post everything online, so you just can't get around that, you know. Yeah. Um, they'll just say, "Oh, do this, do this, do this." Yeah. So you have to resist the temptation to keep it uh, keep it fresh for you. So I, I, I tr that's what I try and do, and it, it's. <laughs> You know, you get stuck in so many, I shouldn't say stuck in so many games, but you, you play so many alphas and betas anymore too as well that it, by the time a game actually gets a release date, you've, you've already played it a number of times and it doesn't, it's not new. So that's the downside to everybody. It's like, oh, it's great. You get to play games all the time. It's like, well, you don't really, <laughs> you don't really play them anymore. You're kind of stuck looking at them with a critical eye and you're not having as much fun because you're looking at why a system doesn't really work right or what's wrong with oh, it and trying to no, dissect it's a, it. And... That is identical to being a game developer. I yeah. mean, you're just deconstructing everything all the time, you know? Um, yeah, exactly. So People, I just got it's a, the same way. Go yeah, ahead. I got a bunch of buffs off that guy. So is there any other kind of boss type mob in here that we might be able to take a look at? I know you said the final boss wasn't in, but just kind of give people a little bit of a care at the... Let's yeah. see here, right. See some unique art, you know. Maybe not um, totally unique art, but... You no, know, I'm not sure, because I would like to get you to see the dragon, but I think that's one of the zones that you didn't have access to. Okay. But well, we, we could just try to... Anyway, go ahead. What was it? Could, could that have been because... Mm -hmm. I needed to teleport, and not so much that you couldn't teleport me. Yes, well, I think because you're immortal or whatever. Yeah. I think. Let's let's go over here and just jump through this portal. Okay. Do you see me? I'm over here. Yeah, I see your name. Yeah, the first MMO that I played was called The Kingdom of Drakkar, and it was a 2D tile-based MMO, sort of a sort of a bridge between a mud and an MMO. And uh, it was it was awesome. <laughs> it was like a really small team, but it was the first game where I was like, I remember talking to another guy. I was working at Dynamics at the time, and I, and I saw him playing. I go, "Can you actually go fight a dragon with a group of real people in the world?" And he's like, "Yep." <laughs> it's like that's amazing because back then everything was single player. Uh huh. I just thought, wow, that is that is just that is just absolutely amazing. Yeah, I used to love all those gold box games uh, that predated that, you know, from the SSI days. Oh, yeah. Well, I wish I had a big uh, chromatic box, 
boss to after, but I'm not finding uh, the right portal to get to the dragon. Anymore, I'm really becoming interested in games that feature more of a uh, sandbox set. It's like, here, the, let us give you the rules and a world to play in, and you be the content. I agree a thousand percent, and we're going to move that way like crazy as much as, much as we can, because it's just so much cooler. With this title, or do you guys have another one in the works? No, with this one. We're, so okay. one of the things we're going to add is to the villages that the... Um, the village can create their own dungeon, um, and then other other uh, villages can come raid the dungeon for relics. Okay. And then maybe when we do that, I'll invite you back to see that stuff. But um, user created content's just better. Yes. I remember well something Gabe Newell said was uh, you know Steam Valve they can compete mm -hmm. with any other company in the world for building great content, but they can't compete with their users. Their users will always do better. And I just think that's true. Oh, and I get killed as soon as you say that. <laughs> Instant resurrection. Sure. His convenience is king. I lost an instant resurrection. I did not see where you went. Did you? Oh, there you are. I died, and I went back to the... Okay, so it wasn't just me. Yeah. We almost had this guy. Huzzah! It's off one of my kids' cartoons. I cannot think of which one it is, but his his shout is huzzah. So that's why. Oh, is it? Okay. Yeah, I, I keep wanting to go huzzah, huzzah. It was like some medieval uh, exclamation. So I thought I had good flavor, so we threw it in. Oh, it's great. I'm just trying. To, I cannot, for the life of me, think it's some Disney. Oh, well, there you go. Or something. Oh, you got some nice gear. Okay, that's cool. Yeah, but yeah, I remember back when I was playing um, Drakkar. That's when games were really hardcore. Like, if you died, you might lose three weeks of, of work. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, and while that, some people look fondly on those days, it's like, you know, <laughs> I don't have that kind of time. <laughs> I know. People laugh at me. Thanks so much for Immortal. Yeah, I know, I, I can die. It's just a name. So where where are we running to? This this Minotaur is like I don't know if I want to fight you or not. Uh, like, I'm gonna hide behind this pillar. Please don't find me. <laughs> You're dead, buddy. Huzzah! Dead. Got a legendary bounty hunter's bow. Yeah, one of the things this new engine got us was like shaders and shadows and lighting and all that kind of cool cool stuff. So, of all the different things that we've seen and done, and I guess you know, have to show for your game, what's kind of like the biggest takeaway that you would want people to know about villagers and heroes? Um. I would say that everything you do matters. So whatever activity you're engaged in, it's important. And it all comes together. Uh, no augmenting is a good example. So that's our weird word for gnomish augmentation. Um, but it's basically you can combine different gear together. So kind of mix, mix and match. And what's cool about that is that um, you can take a crafted sword, a raid sword, and then like a really rare drop sword and, and, and also a village sword and put them all together and make exactly what you want. So basically, that's kind of sandboxy, you know? Yes. I mean, it's not as sandboxy as like, you know, Minecraft or whatever, but it's, it's sandboxy in, in terms of your gear and how you're making it and how you're setting it up. So we don't really know exactly all the combinations, you know? Um, but I just, I, to me, that's just cool. Instead of us deciding all of the different options for the user... You know, it's like, do what you want. Yeah. You guys just and, say, go have fun and try and balance it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. We, so, like, we don't we don't worry about having to, everything's balanced. It's like, well, if there's a bad choice, then 